Number five, want to catch these alien hands? So in the realm of mysterious artifacts that tend to defy earthly explanations, the giant hand discovered in a Peruvian cave back in 2017 stands as quite the tantalizing enigma, if you ask me. And since you're here, Brian Forster and his team associated with Hidden Inca Tours received this peculiar specimen from a group of explorers who stumbled upon it near Cusco. What's more is they claim to have found an elongated humanoid skull in a small mummified alien in proximity to the giant hand. Although the explorers kept the exact location under wraps, get it? They allowed Forrester to examine the uh, anomalous artifacts, if you will. X-ray analysis unveiled a startling revelation. Each of the hand's three fingers possessed an astonishing six bones, in stark contrast to the human hand's, you know, three. Unnamed physicians, perplexed by their findings, classified the hand and skull as biological objects with genuine animal bones and skin tissues. Now the enigma deepens as they asserted that these specimens bore no resemblance to any known earthly creatures. While this discovery invokes images of extraterrestrial origins, conclusive evidence remains elusive. UFO hunter Scott C. Waring of UFOSightingsDaily.com emphasized the hand's otherworldly nature, yet DNA analysis leaves room for ambiguity, as we have no extraterrestrial DNA to really compare it to. Instead, the results only affirm that this mysterious hand does not correspond to any known species of this earth. The existence of the skull adds complexity to the mystery, raising questions about potential cooperative efforts between various alien entities within the, you know, cave tunnel. The implications of this discovery are nothing short of mind-boggling. It challenges our understanding of biology, anthropology, and the boundaries of what may lie beyond our planet. The giant alien hand, along with its associated artifacts, remains a subject of intense scrutiny for researchers and enthusiasts alike, leaving us with more questions than answers in the quest to unravel its true origin and significance. Number 4. Alien Tooth Wheel and just when I think I've seen it all, I'm proven otherwise. 300 million years ago, our planet was a vastly different place. Dinosaurs were still a distant dream, and complex machinery seemed like pure science fiction. Yet in the vast reaches of Russia, a mysterious artifact has been uncovered, shrouded in mystery and controversy. Imagine the astonishment of Dmitri, a resident of Vladivostok, when he stumbled upon an unusual piece of coal while preparing to heat his home. This wasn't your typical lump of ancient carbon, it held a metallic secret, a seemingly artificial metal object, reminiscent of tooth rails used in microscopes and electronics, was embedded within the coal. This discovery raises numerous perplexing questions. For starters, how could such an artifact, bearing a striking resemblance to modern technology, exist in a geological stratum dating back 300 million years? The Voice of Russia reported that when geologists examined the metal object, it exhibited an astonishing lightness and softness, consisting of 98% aluminum and 2% magnesium. These findings led to the unsettling implication that this was not a natural occurrence, but an artificial creation. What truly baffled researchers was the object's shape, resembling a contemporary tooth wheel. The regularity of its structure, with six identical teeth, defined natural explanations. Once again, it's a conundrum that challenges our understanding of ancient technology, and who might have crafted such a device in a time when humans did not yet roam the earth? Speculation abounds, you know, regarding the origin of this metal piece. Some suggest an extraterrestrial connection, given the artifact's anachronistic nature. However, not everybody is convinced. Geologist Sharon Hill, known as I Doubt It, <laughs> dismissed the story as laughable. She questioned the lack of publication in scientific journals and the reliance on the discoverer's word. You know, the notion of an alien origin for aluminum was met with skepticism. Despite the intrigue, the scientific community remains cautious, insisting on further tests and analysis to uncover the truth behind this perplexing find. Let me know in the comments what you think, by the way, because as usual, I'm on team alien artifact that should probably be left alone for our own goodwill. If it's been buried, or you know, covered up, it's probably for a reason. Number three, an alien body. Yep, Alexa talking about a corpse. Go figure. Did you expect anything lost today? This tale takes place in Russia, and well, I don't exactly recommend physically trying to travel there right now for, um, reasons. We shall take this trip virtually. Eugenia Popova of Petrozavodsk City first reported in 2011 that she had been keeping a frozen alien body at a refrigerator for a couple of years. Yeah, just casually. I have questions, like was it next to the food, was it a spare fridge, was it in like a crisper, what did it smell like, was it like baking soda, did it help with the fridge? Like curious minds need to know. Allegedly she found it next to her summer house, so I suppose we can assume it was a fridge that wasn't used as much. Maybe it was like a garage fridge? On the day she discovered the body, Eugenia claimed that she was disturbed by a terrible noise that shook her from her sleep, describing it as deafening, screeching, and overpowering. 
as one does. She rushed outdoors and came across the boiling hot alien remains lying next to metal fragments. The creature was between 40 to 50 centimeters long, had a big head, mouth and orbits, and was wearing a one piece garment of some sort. Two days after going public with her story, Eugenia was visited by some people who confiscated the body for the purpose of investigation, and according to their words, took it to the Karelian Research Center of the Russian Academy of Sciences. However, employees of the research center, who were interviewed later, said they had never heard the story. I'm sensing an all too familiar government cover up here. How about you folks at home? Honestly, if the photos weren't as convincing as they are, I probably wouldn't have included it in today's list, but I just couldn't tear my eyes from how strange it looks. Number two, the original Roswell evidence. Yes, I reference it often, but it's truly one of the best examples of, you know, alien proof that cannot be debunked as easily as some of the other older claims. And also, you know, something that is not from this world. Rancher W.W. Mac Rizal had found wreckage on his property in Lincoln County, New Mexico, which is roughly 120 kilometers north of Roswell, sometime between mid June and early July, describing it as rubber strips tin foil and thick paper. The ranch had no phone and no radio, leaving Mac completely unaware of the ongoing, you know, flying saucer craze at the time. So he gathered the debris and just pushed it under some brush to dispose of it. This was not the first instance of a flying disc spotting in the region, with several stories already being reported to the press that year. So on July 5th, Mac drove into Corona, where he heard stories of silvery flying discs, and two days later made the decision to bring the wreckage into the sheriff's office. The sheriff called in the Roswell Army Airfield, which assigned the matter to Major Jesse Marcel. Mac brought Major Marcel Sell back to the debris site, and the two gathered up more of the pieces of the debris, with the major taking the materials home. The next day, public information officer for the Roswell Army, Walter Haunt, issued a press release stating that personnel from the field's 509th Operations Group had recovered a flying disc. On that same day, Major Marcel took the material to his base commander, Colonel William Blanchard, who reported the findings to General Roger Ramey at Fort Worth Army Airfield, FWAAF for short or fwaf. <laughs> General Ramey ordered that the material be flown to Fort Worth immediately, leaving Marcel to board a B-29 Superfortress to make the flight. As soon as Marcel brought the material to General Ramey's office, both Ramey and his chief of staff, Colonel Thomas Dubose, identified the material as pieces of a weather balloon kite. The weather officer on duty explained to reporters that ray wind devices were used at about 80 weather stations across the country. The balloons were attached to a six-pointed reflective device that looked like a silver star, and after launch, the balloon would expand with increasing altitude before bursting at around 60,000 feet, with pieces dispersing in their fall to the ground. After the initial newspaper reports of 1947, the Roswell incident faded from public attention for more than 30 years until the late 1970s, which brings us to February of 1978, when UFO researcher Stanton Friedman interviewed Major Marcel, whose statements contradicted those he made to the press in 1947, saying, you know, they wanted some statements, but he had to keep his mouth shut at the time. And uh, once again, General Ramey is the one who discussed everything to the newspapers and, you know, Forget about it, saying it's nothing more than a weather observation balloon. Of course, both men knew differently. It wasn't a weather balloon. And after the United States Congressional Inquiries, the General Accounting Office actually launched an inquiry and directed the Office of the United States Secretary of the Air Force to conduct an internal investigation. A report released in 1994 concluded that the material recovered in 1947 was likely, eh, keyword here, debris from now Project Mogul. So not a weather balloon. Hmm. A little suspicious. A scholarly consensus emerged concluding that the military had decided to conceal the true purpose of the crash device, allegedly now nuclear test monitoring. The balloon had allegedly been launched from Alamogordo Army Airfield a month earlier, carrying a radar reflector and classified Project Mogul sensors. The Air Force reports were dismissed by UFO experts as being either disinformation or simply implausible. So while this has been debunked time and time again by a constantly lying government, I truly believe that these items were truly not from this world. Number one, Mexico alien corpses. Ah, uh, yep, more corpses. Alrighty, folks, we're ending today with the most recent case on our list, a display of bodies from September of this year. Now, few cases are as captivating as this discovery of two tiny mummified figures found in Peru. Mexican journalist and UFO enthusiast Jamie Mawson passionately champions these beings as a pivotal moment in human history. With elongated heads and three fingers on each hand, they challenge our understanding of life on Earth. In the heart of Mexico City, in the district of Santa Fe, Mawson's office became a hub of intrigue. Two closed boxes, their glass lids offering a tantalizing glimpse into the unknown, held these peculiar figures. As the witnesses gathered around, their ancient appearance became apparent, as they possessed two eyes, a mouth, two arms, and two legs. Masson claims these beings, you know, found near the always intriguing Nazca lines in 2017, are unlike anything the world has seen. Through social media and public presentations, Masson provides a compelling case that these beings date back about a thousand years, and they belong to no known earthly species. The assertion that one of them, possibly a female, contained eggs adds another layer of mystery. Now, this man's 
crusade is driven by his belief that this discovery has the potential to unite humanity in the face of such profound questions. However, some skepticism looms. David Spurgel, a former head of Princeton University's astrophysics department, calls for transparency and openness in testing these samples, welcoming scrutiny from the global scientific community. DNA and carbon dating tests shared on social media and in presentations provide supporting evidence for the otherworldly nature of said beings. The results claim a genetic composition that defies known terrestrial evolution, with 30% remaining a mystery. Carbon dating from the National Autonomous University of Mexico asserts that these beings are more than a millennium old, a finding that stirs curiosity. The figures themselves shown at the hearing exhibit humanoid features but with peculiar characteristics, such as retractable necks and long skulls reminiscent of avian traits. They also reportedly possess implants of rare metals, including osmium, one of Earth's scarcest elements. The question of how these figures arrived in Mexico remains shrouded in mystery, with the possession resting with an unidentified Mexican man who was present in Mawson's office. He offers a little explanation, promising to reveal the full story at an undisclosed time. Jose de Jesus Zauque Benitez, director of the Health Sciences Research Institute of the Secretary of the Navy, stands alongside Mawson, supporting his claims. Their interpretation of the scientific data raises profound questions about the origins of these beings. As Mawson and his team strive to push the boundaries of our understanding, the world watches, torn between skepticism and wonder, in the pursuit of answers that may forever alter our perception of, uh, what the heck is on this planet? Number 5, 2023 hearing. Starting off with some background information on who David is. David Grush is a decorated Afghanistan soldier and former Air Force Intelligent Officer who worked at the NGA, National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, and at the NRO. He's an accomplished man who is extremely knowledgeable of the events and conversations that are taking place in government settings, especially surrounding UAPs and Inhumans. David claimed that he was informed of a multi-decade Pentagon program that sought to locate, collect, and reconstruct UAPs. He interviewed over 40 co-workers in four years and came to the conclusion that the government is currently in possession of a UAP. He said he actually knew the exact location of some of the technology as the information was provided to him. David claims that the program is funded above a congressional oversight being bankrolled by misappropriation of funds, which kind of sounds real. He also claimed to be aware of colleagues who had recovered from non-human biological uh, derived from UAP crashes as he claimed that this testimony was based on information given to him by trusted individuals who all had long-standing records of legitimacy. But of course he can't say who the individuals are. He said that the sources shared proof in photographs, documentations, and official oral testimonies. And when he was asked if he had known anyone who lost their lives due to inhuman materials, Grish responded, I directed people with that knowledge to the appropriate authorities. Okay, a little sketchy. And the whole thing sounds a little off, but you know, Whatever. Members of the government have come forward painting David as a madman, cause who doesn't? Cause who doesn't know the difference between real and fake? But for David, who was accompanied by two officers, who both corroborated his story, it is possible that maybe David was telling the truth. Or is there an organization that is currently conducted alien testing right under our noses? All I will say is that David claims sounds very familiar as the fact that David came forward with his testimony was immediately labeled as an insane pathological liar. Shows how concerning the government was of becoming an object of suspicion. Painting people as crazy is a pretty common deflection tactic if it means disregarding the truth. After all, when it comes to the modern day and age, when it comes to the government and their plans, they always got something up their sleeves that the rest of us don't want to see, or should see. Number four, Obama knew. One of the most significant revelations of Grisha's explosive statements was that his claim of having spoken directly to former President Barack Obama on the matter. According to Grish, certain segments of this government system has been deliberately withholding information from the public for decades. In a candid revelation, Grish suggested that a recent president hinting, strongly hinting at Obama, affirming that the depth of his many claims he stated that the legal repercussions were not a factor to be considered lightly, signaling a shift in the apparent seriousness of the disclosure. Gersh's assertions that he engaged in a conversation with the recent US president, specifically one that had occupied the office very recently, add a layer of intrigue to the narrative. Obama, as the only recent former president openly addressing the topic of extraterrestrial existence, became an obvious focal point of this revelation. This disclosure came at a time when global discussions of the existence of extraterrestrial life had gained momentum, and the world today is witnessing an increased openness in considering the possibility of contact with the beings from beyond our planet. The mainstream acknowledgement of such discussions on a platform as influential as the Joe Rogan experience shows a shifting perception in society. The revelation made by Gersh aligned with a broader trend where discussions about UFOs and extraterrestrial intelligence have become less stigmatized and more mainstream. This openness reflects a growing curiosity and acceptance regarding the existence of life beyond Earth as society struggles with the implications of these disclosures, the intersection of official statements, whistleblowers, and the public interest creates a complex story that mirrors the evolving perceptions on our minuscule place in the cosmos. Number two, ancient mentions. UFOs reported to have been around for thousands of years in the podcast episode. David focuses on debris that was reportedly found in Italy hundreds of years ago. But alien sightings have been going on for much longer than that. Even famous 
philosophers have believed that there were alien forces at work on our planet, like Plutarch. Plutarch was a Greek turned Roman historian, according to Plutarch. This sighting would have been taken place in 74 BCE, prior to a planned battle. The army of the Roman Empire was marching on the king of Plantis in the region of Lurgia, where Turkey now stands. However, the two armies never met due to a large flame descending from the sky. Ah. In between the two marching sides, the two armies then took the fiery blaze as a warning sign and decided not to fight. The army separated and everyone was spared from the battle. Plutarch wrote the event, which was allegedly cited by thousands of people, describing the fiery object as a molten silver colored object that resembled a bottle of wine. Many have since attempted to theorize the origin of the object. People have theorized the object was just a falling meteorite or something of that nature. But NASA scientist Richard Stothers explained why it might not have been a meteorite as part of 2007 antiquity study. He reasons that the molten silver color doesn't quite line up with the scientists would have been expected to see a meteor event. People have also been reminded to take the knowledge that ancient civilizations had about astrological phenomena into account, including a long history of record meteorite events. If what the armies had seen that day was a meteor, they would have been able to recognize it as such. But according to Plutarch, they didn't, which leaves the origin of the wine-shaped bottle object a uh, mystery. Plutarch, though a credible historian, had been known to emphasize the moral lessons of history at the expense of accuracy, as some believe that the passage written was an allegory used to relay a message about war, and not actually had been taken literally. But the fact that this phenomenon was witnessed by thousands of soldiers add to the credibility and mystery behind the wine bottle shaped event. And finally, number one, the Vatican. Grusha's focused on Italy, as I had said, but this recount of the story behind what exactly was found in Italy is immensely interesting. Interesting. Mm. Gersh claims that their earliest document UFO incident discussed the transcript occurred in 1931 in Magneta, Italy, with the Lombardy region. The UFO, initially resembling a lenticular disc, crashed and morphed into a bell or acorn shape upon impact. Surprisingly, the artifact contained no biological remnants, and puzzling the Italians who sought clarifications from the Germans, suspecting it might have been one of their experimental crafts. Italians researchers later uncovered documents revealing the incident despite the initial suppression. The Germans disclaimed ownership of the strange object, but collaboration between the Italians and German scientific military entities ensued as both nations were very intrigued by the unusual artifact. The collaboration specific remains unclear but suggests a level of scientific and military exchange prompted by the discovery. The Italians, perplexed by the crash, reached out to the Germans for clarifications, sparking a joint investigation into the mysterious object. The Germans denied ownership but cooperations in examining the artifact. This collaboration hints at the international curiosity surrounding such occurrences and the cross-border efforts to understand them. While details of the discovery remains uncertain, the historical records indicate that the crash vehicle measured approximately 20 feet by 10 feet, making it sizable by not just excessively large. Questions regarding its nature as a drone or a piloted craft were dismissed as there were no evidence of occupants inside the aircraft. Or artifact. After the crash, the military intervened, relocating the object to designated storage location. The United States eventually obtained access to the artifacts towards the end of the World War II, marking one of the earliest instances of documented UFOs discovered by the US government. Human intelligence operations were informally conducted by various entities, including the Vatican, which played a role in intelligence gathering for the United States. This background helped explain why the Pope became so involved in investigations of the UFO crash, as the recovery of the artifact, one of its earliest access by the United States, triggered attempts at reversing engineering and understanding its technological aspects. The secrecy surrounding by the UFO program mirrored the Manhattan Project's model, aiming to safeguard information and controlling the decimations of discoveries. Over the decades, insights gained from these programs have influenced various classified projects, contributing to the national defense innovations. Number five, PEI unidentified fossil. In late August on Cape Egmont Beach in Prince Edward Island, Canada, a routine dog walk for high school teacher Lisa St. Cour Cormier turned extraordinary when she stumbled upon a remarkable find a 300 million year old fossil. During her walk with her dog Sammy, Cormier initially mistook the fossil for a tree root protruding from the sand. However, a closer look revealed a well-preserved ribcage, spine, and skull, sparking her curiosity further. Excited about her find, Cormier shared images of the fossil with her family. Her mother-in-law, in turn, forwarded the picture to PEI's fossil experts, including Laura McNeil from Prehistoric Island Tours. Recognizing the significance of the discovery, McNeil anticipated its potential impact on the island. Geologist and paleontologist John Calder, upon receiving the photos, recognized the rarity of the specimen and expressed a sense of urgency to examine it. Calder highlighted the scarcity of fossils from this period, emphasizing the importance of Cormier's find. Calder speculated that the creature lived during the Permian period, categorizing it as a rare specimen, possibly a reptile creature. The uniqueness of the find adds to its significance, potentially making it a one-of-a-kind discovery. Prince Edward Island has gained recognition in recent years for significant fossil discoveries. In 2018, 
2018, fossilized footprints of pre-dinosaur reptilian predator from the Permian period were found on Cavendish Beach. Calder emphasized the island's prominence in the world of paleontology, attributing its richness in fossils to being above water during ancient times when much of Canada was submerged. And now it's sinking again. Humans are insanely irresponsible. Oh my god. <laughs> Concerned about the new fossil being washed away, Calder and a dig team made a substantial effort to retrieve it, given its location at the water's edge. The urgency stemmed from the need to secure the fossil during a brief window between the tides. Prince Edward Island's fossil legacy, displayed by Cormier's chance discovery, adds a chapter to the island's rich geological history, captivating paleontologists and enthusiasts worldwide. Number 3. Atacama Skeleton The Atacama Skeleton, commonly referred to as Atta, is a 6 inch skeletal remain of a human fetus discovered in 2003 in a deserted Chilean town in the Atacama Desert. Initial DNA analysis in 2018 indicated unusual mutations related to dwarfism and scoliosis. However, subsequent research disputed these findings, suggesting normal fetal development. Speculation arose, including claims by UFO theorist Stephen M. Greer suggesting extraterrestrial origins. This led to Ada's inclusion in the 2013 UFO film Sirius. Stanford University geneticist Gary P. Nolan analyzed the remains, concluding that Ada is indeed human, dispelling extraterrestrial claims. Initially thought to be older, Ada's remains date back to the late 1970s. Despite an irregularly shaped skull, 10 ribs instead of 12, and potential signs of oxycephaly, experts like William Jungers proposed that Ada was a prematurely born human fetus. DNA analysis revealed the B2MT DNA haplotype group, indicating an indigenous origin in the western region of South America. Nolan's 2018 study identified rare bone aging disorder and 64 unusual mutations in genes associated with skeletal development, dwarfism, scoliosis, and muscle abnormalities. A study led by New Zealand's University of Otago questioned Nolan's findings, asserting normal skeletal development and expressing skepticism about genomic results. Ethical concerns were raised, criticizing Nolan's work for potential colonialist tendencies. Genome Research, the publisher of the earlier study, responded by defending their ethical standards but acknowledged the need for reviewing policies on such studies. In response to ethical concerns, the authors of the Genome Research article called for reconstruction of Ada's remains, distancing themselves from possible ethical missteps. They emphasized their limited knowledge about the circumstances of discovery and handling, as they were presented with a small bone sample for analysis. Many people believe that the body is simply a human, but the debate continues to remain prominent. Number 2. Varginha UFO Incident In January 1996, the tranquil city of Varginha, Brazil, witnessed an extraordinary event that sent shockwaves through the community. Numerous locals reported sightings of a UFO flying towards the region. Eyewitnesses saw that the UFO crash landed in a rural area, sparking immediate curiosity and fear among the residents. As the news of the UFO spread, somehow an even more astonishing aspect emerged. Some witnesses disclaimed that they had encountered strange humanoid beings near the crash site. Descriptions of these entities were consistent throughout the witnesses, small humanoid figures with dark oily skin and large red eyes. In the aftermath of the reported UFO crash, the Brazilian military became involved. Witnesses claimed that Brazilian personnel donned in hazmat suits cordoned off the area and retrieved the alien bodies. The military, however, denied any involvement with the incident, fueling even more conspiracy theories about a possible top secret government cover up. The report suggested that the alien bodies were then taken to local hospitals for examination. Witnesses claimed that several medical staff were involved in the autopsies on the extraterrestrial entities. This purported connection between the medical community and the alien bodies intensified the conspiracy theories surrounding the incident. As news of the incident spread through the media, it triggered a wave of public hysteria. Local international news outlets covered the story, amplifying the speculation about the presence of alien bodies. The lack of official explanations and contradictory statements from authorities further fueled the conspiracy, which I mean was blazing at this point. Decades after the Varginha incident, speculation and conspiracy theories persist. The event has become ingrained in UFO culture, with books, documentaries, and online discussions continuing to explore the possibility of extraterrestrial contact. The enduring mystery of Varginha serves as an example of our fascination with the unknown and the complexities of separating fact from imagination and fiction in the world of unidentified phenomena. Number 1. Texas 1897 In 1897, the small town of Aurora, Texas found itself thrust into the conspiracy spotlight when residents claimed to witness an otherworldly event. On April 17, a UFO crashed into a windmill on Judge Proctor's property, leading to a sequence of events that would forever be etched into extraterrestrial lore. Locals who rushed to the crash site reported an astonishing discovery. The wreckage of the UFO contained the remains of a small being, who was described as not of the 
this world. Witnesses claimed the creature was minuscule, with features reminiscent of our imagined extraterrestrial being. The extraterrestrial body was said to be badly disfigured, which resulted in raised eyebrows and widespread speculation. Residents claimed to have found a small, undecipherable metallic object near the crash site as well. This object, thought to be a piece of the UFO, fueled the notion that the otherworldly visitor crash landed in their town. The mystery deepened as reports circulated of a small inscription on the metallic fragment. As word spread of the findings, so did theories of a cover up. Conspiracy theorists argued that the government was actively suppressing information about the incident to prevent mass hysteria. And honestly, that doesn't sound too insane to me. The alien being was said to have left behind a message, possibly a form of extraterrestrial communication that could unravel mysteries of the universe. This speculation intensified the belief that the authorities were concealing profound knowledge about the cosmos. In a move that added an air of legitimacy to the claims, the townspeople gave the extraterrestrial pilot a proper burial in their local cemetery, a headstone marked with the final resting place of the alien, and with the epitaph describing the mysterious unidentified visitor as a Martian. This symbolic gesture further fueled the conspiracy, as Aurora became a focal point for those fascinated by the prospect of extraterrestrial life. While skepticism has surrounded the Aurora UFO incident, its legacy definitely persists in pop culture. The 1897 Texas encounter remains a cornerstone in the world of UFO lore, capturing the imaginations of those who believe in the possibility of extraterrestrial life, i.e. us curious minds. If we didn't have enough to worry about in this crazy new year, may I offer you 10 foot tall aliens? Here's the thing, anything over 7 feet tall is already terrifying to me, personally. Ditto for aliens on their own, no matter what they look like. So if you're combining those two, Hello, Alexa's Nightmares 101. A video showing two human-like creatures on top of a hill at an island in Brazil was gaining some traction on social media the other day. According to a New York Post report, the beings were 10 foot tall and spotted at Ilha do Mel, an island more than three kilometers off of the coast of southeast Brazil. Ilha do Mel, a favorite spot for environmentally conscious travelers and beach lovers, is celebrated for its varied ecosystems. Spanning a mere five kilometers in length and 800 meters in width, the island presents a scenic mosaic of natural marbles. So there was a couple of videos that were floating around. There was a main one and then the second one was pretty close by and the appearance of these creatures on the hilltop kind of sparked some buzz amongst the locals. They stand confidently on top of the hill, which locals say is difficult to reach, with the shrubbery barely reaching their knees. The pair could be seen swinging their arms in an eerily human-like manner, but not enough to convince eyewitnesses that they weren't witnessing aliens. One person said in one of the videos I saw, it's too big to be a person. I agree. Look at the way he moves. It's really weird. Look at the size of those. It's very fast. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely agree. For me, it's enough to see the speed with which this creature goes down the hill. Anybody who's done trails on hills like this knows that you don't go down a hill like this in one to two minutes. That was from one user on Instagram, and somebody else said that the way they move reminds him a lot of the men in black, which eep. Every time I mention the men in black, I get scared that they should be like right behind me and just Somebody else was like, one thing I do know, I'm never stepping there again. Even the Brazilian government had to make a statement. They're like, okay, we're not gonna confirm if you know the giants were tourists from another country or another planet, but they're like, surreal what happened on Ilha do Mel. Great summer, it's another story, and even strange beings came to check it out. Which like, that's a bit of a weird tweet. Could you at least like, deny, please? Or confirm? Not this weird like, yay, tourist stuff. That's just scary. Time to travel back to a video from 2011 that I have no clue how to explain. We're traveling over to Sri Lanka for this one, and while it's not an alien sighting, it's one of the more unique UFOs I've ever seen in the sky. Look, I think I can mention that, and like, that's saying something at this point. It has been almost a year of me hanging out with all of you fabulous internet people, and I've seen a lot of UFOs. So let's picture this. Not your run of the mill alien sighting. This is a spectacle of the sky that defies any kind of explanation. We're not venturing into the cliched realms of little green men here. This is a peculiar cosmic artifact. The UFO looks holographic, kind of like a metallic spinning top toy, like a Beyblade, or two metallic Hershey kisses pushed together and it's just sort of hovering in the sky. Whee! It's not your typical saucer shaped troll. Think of it as a, once again, celestial Beyblade making an appearance in the skies. And the visual oddity doesn't end there. This could be, like I said, some Hershey's Kisses, they could be engaged in a cosmic tango, pushed together in an otherworldly embrace. I know, I know, it's a bit of a stretch, but like, look at the dang thing. And also, look at its peculiar nature. It's a metallic spinning top, just hovering in the vast expanse of the sky, seeming to scoff at the conventions of our earthly expectations. This isn't your mundane, everyday UFO flying saucer. This is a cosmic ballet that leaves us, 
the audience to this extraterrestrial performance in a state of what the bleep? Think of it this way. Is it a mere quirk in the sky, a celestial play of lights and shadows, or is it a glimpse into the cosmic absurdity that eludes our comprehension? The very essence of unidentified flying objects lies in the ambiguity that shrouds them, and this enigma is no exception. As we navigate you know, the unknowns, it's encounters like this that beckon us to question our understanding. Are we actually witnessing advanced extraterrestrial technology, or is this an elaborate hoax? Like is this some really weird drone, or a government thing that we don't know about yet? And the grand theater of the cosmos, where the stage is set with galaxies and a script is written in the language of the stars, this UFO takes center stage as I don't know what. The cosmic mystery persists, leaving folks like me to grapple with the enigma of metallic spinning tops and celestial Hershey's kisses just hovering in the tapestry of the unknown. Yes, I'm hungry. Yes, it's close to Valentine's Day. And yes, I do have Hershey kisses at home. Okay. Imagine you're a homeowner, heading out into your backyard simply to throw away trash and suddenly face to face with an alien. I don't think that'll ever happen to me in this lifetime, mainly because I don't see myself owning a home anytime soon. In this economy? As an actress? Don't make me laugh. I know the worst my dad has ever dealt with was a baby bear, or maybe like a mama bear invading the trash, and you know, he is a homeowner. Thankfully, they never tried to break through what was a wooden back door at the time. Not anymore, but at the time. Yeah, yeah, I know. Come on, Alexa, get back on topic. Last year, a video was circulating on the app formerly known as Twitter, depicting a non human entity appearing briefly and blinking. The footage revealed a distinct form featuring two large eyes aligning with the caller's previous description. The caller reported, There's like an eight foot person beside it, and another one is inside, and it has big eyes, and it's looking at it. Us, and it's still there. So, in a couple of the videos, like three men and a woman can be seen attempting to record a non human something. Notably, one of them is armed with a personal safety device. This did take place in the States after all. All of the folks in the video appear visibly frightened by the presence of this non human entity that's just hanging out. And the police didn't really make an official statement because. Why would they? The video footage that was accessed by a local news source, uh, News Now, did show one officer walking into the backyard to investigate, and the video also shows a witness telling the police, I don't believe in it, but what I saw right now, I do believe in. And the cops like, yeah, you guys seem like legit scared, so I don't blame you. However, without any concrete evidence, the police closed the case with no concrete answers. But like, come on folks, you know, I know. Government cover ups are a thing, the proof is there. Good old malls, usually home to high schoolers, senior walking groups, and the most annoying families you will ever encounter. Trust me, I used to work in retail at a fairly large mall. Can you guess which store? But apparently, on the first day of this 2024 year, the Miami Mall over in Florida might just have been home to something a little more out of this world. All right, let's start with the official story. Apparently, a group of roughly 50 youths caused a riot at Bayside Marketplace, an outdoor mall roughly five miles from South Beach. And granted, this is according to the Miami Police Department. They were setting off fireworks which like Really? So obviously this led to panic, as some assumed there was a much more major crime. Now this came from Miami Police Department's Public Information Officer, Michael Vega. Only four folks were arrested though. Police were dispatched for crowd control due to, you know, the panic. I've been in some panicky situations in crowds. You need a lot of help. Some businesses were also temporarily closed to allow the cops to clear the area, but Vega was like, aliens had nothing to do with this. Nope. Nope. He emailed the press saying there was no aliens, we didn't close any airports, nothing's being withheld from the public, lol. Well, hmm, that's what people in power always say. Especially with an LOL, I believe that statement as far as I can throw it. And I'm not very athletic. In the days after the incident, folks on social media burst into a frenzy, honing in on what they described as Miami Mall aliens. Some folks suggested police were responding to aliens, not young people. Several people reviewed video of the incident circulating online and claimed that they could see an alien figure in the grainy footage. Others quickly posted memes because, well, we love memes. To quote a post I saw on the app formerly known as Twitter, 10 feet alien slash creatures caught on camera, fired at inside and outside Miami Mall, media silent, cops are covering it up saying young people were fighting with fireworks, yet all these cop cars and air traffic stopped that night except for black military choppers and no media coverage. Wow, feel like I'm getting a nasty case of deja vu. Really? Like black military choppers? Clips taken from the viral video were shared a lot on social media, claiming that an 8 to 10 foot alien could be seen at the mall. Now once again, 10 foot tall aliens? Multiple? In this year already? The low quality clip appears to show a tall glowing figure near police vehicles. Look, I've seen videos that were less likely to be aliens turn out to be worth something in terms of being the genuine article, so I'm not dismissing it. What if every Florida man photo or meme was just an alien trying to blend in here on earth and failing? Chew on that for thought. Also, what if they were hanging out in Brazil and were like, let's go try Miami next? I'm not quite sure if the final entry into today's list is a large bug, alien, or UFO, so I'm gonna need y'all's assistance to help me decipher just what incarnation this damn thing is. So, the video, capturing this cloaked jellyfish shaped object, gracefully traversing the airspace above a US military base, kinda has a lot of people going, 
Huh? This very curious footage, recorded through the lens of a thermal imaging camera, adds a layer of complexity to the ever mysterious UFO whodunits. The video was initially shared by UFO investigator Jeremy Corbell and brought the peculiar incident into the public eye. Jeremy emphasized the incredible risk undertaken by an individual within the military ranks to smuggle this footage into the public domain. Whistleblowers have a very bad history of just disappearing if the government isn't happy or just publicly being discredited if their boss is in a good mood. Now, the intrigue deepens as Jeremy details the movements of this jellyfish looking, I don't know. A mesmerizing ballet unfolds as the unidentified object glides over a body of water, abruptly halts its movement, descends into the water with an almost ritualistic precision, and then for a suspended 17 minutes, embraces silence. But then with the suddenness of cosmic punctuation, it goes emerges from the water, launching itself into the sky at a daring around 45 degree angle. I was not good at math, folks. Amidst all of this, Su Gao, a spokesperson for the Department of Defense, kind of came out. She's like, okay, official statement right here in her very carefully crafted words. She refrains from validating or debunking the authenticity of the leaked material, saying, you know, we don't comment on the authenticity of alleged DOD materials that may have been leaked. But once again, may have not confirming, not denying. The subtleties of the statement aren't going unnoticed, everybody. Analysts like Ross Coolhart highlight the absence of a categorical denial, interpreting it as a strategic maneuver by government entities. It's the good old dance of neither confirm, don't deny. A classic diplomatic move when navigating, you know, all this alien and UFO knowledge that we have. What do you think? Let me know in the comments because my personal verdict, it's real. We saw this at Roswell. We've seen this ever since. The government says, oh, it's fake, and then it's real. Number five, the Mexican Roswell Stone. The Mexican Roswell Stone, also known as the Stone of the First Encounter, is an artifact thought to have major extraterrestrial connections. Discovered in a remote village in Mexico, this stone has sparked curiosity and debate among researchers and UFO enthusiasts for over a decade. The stone was unearthed by a farmer named Dionisio Pulido in 2011 while he was plowing his field. Polito reported finding a strange flat black stone buried underneath the soil. Intrigued by its peculiar appearance, he contacted local authorities who quickly recognized the potential significance of the discovery. The Mexican Roswell stone is a smooth oval shaped object measuring approximately 30 centimeters in diameter. It is made out of a dark glass like material resembling obsidian but with unique characteristics. Researchers note the absence of any tool marks on its surface, raising questions about its possible artificial origin. One of the most intriguing aspects of the stone is the presence of intricate engravings on its surface. The carvings depict a variety of symbols, including what some interpret as a stylized representation of the cosmos, celestial bodies, and humanoid figures. Some researchers claim these symbols suggest a connection to ancient astronaut theories and extraterrestrial visitations. Initial analysis revealed that the stone is composed of a type of glass called diorite, a substance found in the Earth's crust. However, the absence of typical tool marks challenges conventional explanations for its creation. Some argue that the stone's unique properties may result from unconventional manufacturing techniques. The discovery of the Mexican Roswell stone has fueled various theories. Some people propose that it represents evidence of ancient contact with advanced civilizations, possibly civilizations of extraterrestrial origin. On the other hand, some suggest that the stone may be a modern hoax designed to attract attention or promote tourism in the region. And hey, it got my attention, so if it is a hoax, they did a pretty good job. The village has actually experienced an influx of tourists and recent researchers eager to examine the artifact firsthand. While this attention has brought economic benefits, it has also led to increased scrutiny and speculation about the authenticity of the discovery. Number 4. Tullam Underwater Cave Paintings The Tullam Underwater Cave Paintings, located off the coast of Tullam in Mexico, have captivated researchers and divers alike due to their strange, unanswered nature. Dating back over a thousand years, these submerged artworks provide a unique glimpse into ancient civilizations and their connections to the cosmos. They were discovered fairly recently, in 2019, by a team of underwater archaeologists led by Dr. Helena Rodriguez. The Tellum underwater cave paintings consist of intricate designs and symbols painted on the cave walls. The vibrant pigments used in these artworks have remarkably endured the test of time, preserving the visual narrative of an ancient culture. Dating methods suggest that the paintings originate from around 900 to 1200 AD. One eye-catching feature of the Tellum underwater cave paintings is the bouts of cosmic images. Imagery. Researchers have positively identified depictions of celestial bodies, constellations, and what appears to be advanced astronomical knowledge. The presence of such cosmic themes has fueled speculation about the possibility of extraterrestrial influences. Advocates of the ancient astronaut hypothesis, and I didn't know that you could be an official advocate for a hypothesis, but I was also unaware that this was like an official group. It's all capital, by the way, like ancient astronaut, capital A's, proper nouns. Like, this is an official group dedicated to the study of ancient 
astronauts. I'm sidetracked, sorry. Anyway, the capital A ancient astronaut advocates propose that the Tullum underwater cave paintings may depict encounters with extraterrestrial beings. Some think that the cosmic imagery would represent advanced knowledge bestowed upon the Maya by extraterrestrial visitors, influencing their art, spirituality, and possibly even technological advancements. Another theory suggests that the paintings serve as a form of communication or homage to extraterrestrial entities. The intricate symbols and depictions of otherworldly beings might symbolize a connection between the ancient Maya and beings from beyond Earth, possibly influencing their religious practices. Some researchers propose that the cosmic imagery in the Tullum underwater cave paintings reflects the Maya's deep-seated cosmic rituals and beliefs. Rather than extraterrestrial influence, these theories suggest that the Maya developed a sophisticated understanding of the cosmos, integrating it into their spiritual practices and daily lives. While the cosmic imagery has sparked intriguing theories of extraterrestrial influence, the true meaning behind these underwater masterpieces remains a mystery. Number 3. Tuxla Statuette The Tuxla Statuette was discovered in the Tuxla Mountains of Mexico in the early 1930s. This small jadeite figurine stands only 6 centimeters tall and depicts a humanoid creature with an elongated head and large almond-shaped eyes. Archaeologists date the Tuxla Statuette to approximately 1200 BCE to 400 CE. Its craftsmanship reflects the skilled artistry of ancient Mesoamerican cultures. The figurine's small size and exquisite detailing make it a unique find. Numerous theories have emerged speculating about the Tuxla statuette's potential extraterrestrial origin. While mainstream archaeology attributes it to indigenous cultures, alternative perspectives propose unconventional ideas. Again, advocates of the official ancient astronaut hypothesis argue that artifacts like the Tuxla statuette depict extraterrestrial beings who allegedly visited Earth in ancient times. They claim that the figurine's humanoid features, especially the elongated head and large eyes, resemble descriptions of aliens reported in modern UFO encounters. Some researchers suggest that the Tuxla statuette may represent a deity or mythological figure within the cultural context of ancient Mesoamerica. The elongated head might symbolize spiritual or divine qualities rather than extraterrestrial origins. A more conventional interpretation sees the Tuxla statuette as a product of artistic expression within the cultural styles of its time. The figurine may have served ritualistic or ceremonial purposes, possibly related to shamanistic practices or religious beliefs. Understanding the cultural context and artistic traditions of the Olmec civilization is important while researching an explanation that may lay within a holistic interpretation. As archaeological research advances and new discoveries are made, the true nature and purpose of the Tuxla statuette may become more clear. Number 2. The Mayan Crystal Skulls The crystal skulls are a set of strange artifacts that have fascinated both archaeologists and conspiracy theorists for so many years. These crystal skulls are precisely what they sound like, human skull-shaped carvings made from various types of quartz crystal. Most of them date back to pre-Columbian South American civilizations, specifically the Aztec, Mixtec, and Maya. The theories around these skulls is what continues to make them so popular and intriguing, and let me tell you, there are a lot of theories. Some people believe that the skulls are ancient relics with supernatural or extraterrestrial origins, while others think they possess mystical or healing powers. One popular theory is that the crystal skulls were created by advanced ancient civilizations that possessed knowledge far beyond what we currently assume and understand. Some parts of this theory suggest that these crystals hold the secrets of lost technologies and predictions about future events. Then, of course, there's the theory that suggests the skulls are linked to extraterrestrial beings. This theory further assumes that these artifacts were gifts or messages from ancient alien visitors to Earth, gifted with the intention to guide or enlighten the less advanced beings that they had stumbled across, humans. Skeptics, however, assume that these crystal skulls are simply modern creations, likely made during the late 1800s or early 1900s, and were then falsely aged so they would appear as ancient artifacts. Some well-documented forgeries and the absence of archaeological context for many of these skulls do add a lot of substance to skeptics' beliefs. Despite this, the mystery surrounding the crystal skulls continues to capture the imaginations of curious minds and fuel a lot of debates about their origins, purpose, and theorized mystical properties. Whether they're being viewed as ancient relics, products of elaborate hoaxes, or otherworldly symbols, the crystal skulls have become a fascinating and intriguing find for the world of archaeology and unknown phenomena. Number 1. Tullum's Mysterious Frescoes Tullum, situated along the picturesque coast of Mexico, is well known for the ancient Mayan ruins that stand as a testament to a formerly rich and highly sophisticated civilization. Among the intriguing artifacts within Tullum's archaeological site are the mysterious frescoes that adorn the walls of various structures. Tullum's frescoes date back to around 1200 to 1521 
1 AD. These incredible intricate murals depict scenes of daily life, religious rituals, and mythological narratives. The vibrant colors and detailed imagery provide a glimpse into the cultural and spiritual practices of this ancient society. One of the most intriguing and controversial theories surrounding Tullum's frescoes suggests an extraterrestrial influence on their creation. Advocates of this theory, though not part of an official capitalized letter organization, point to certain elements in the artwork that seem to depict unconventional beings and advanced technology, sparking speculation about an out of this world connection. Certain frescoes in Tullum depict figures with elongated heads, resembling the classic depiction of aliens. Symbols resembling spacecraft and celestial bodies are identified in the artwork as well. While skeptics dismiss these interpretations, some argue that the Mayans might have had contact with extraterrestrial beings, influencing their artistic expressions. Obviously, not all scholars and archaeologists subscribe to the extraterrestrial theory. Many propose alternative explanations, suggesting that the unusual figures and symbols in the frescoes could be representations of deities, shamanic visions, or mythological beings from Mayan cosmology. Many also argue that attributing the frescoes to extraterrestrial influence oversimplifies the complex nature of Mayan art and mythology. They state that the Mayans employed artistic license and symbolic imagery, using unconventional forms to convey spiritual and cultural concepts unique to their worldview. While the mystery surrounding Tullum's frescoes continues to captivate the imaginations of researchers and enthusiasts alike, the debate over their alleged extraterrestrial origin remains inconclusive. Whether rooted in Mayan mythology or influenced by cosmic encounters, these ancient artworks stand as proof of the intricacy of human history, and how if you're not part of an official organization, I am less likely to believe the theories you're telling me. Ancient astronauts? Uh, but ancient astronauts with two capital A's? Yeah, you've got my full attention. Number five, Avi Loeb. Harvard professor Avi Loeb and his team have undertaken a fascinating quest involving the potential discovery of alien technology fragments. Their journey takes us all the way back to 2014, when a meteor landed in the waters of Papua New Guinea. The pieces they collected from this mysterious visitor have raised intriguing questions. The US Space Command released a statement saying that there is a 99.999% certainty that these materials originated from another solar system. This revelation prompted a thorough investigation, with the government providing a 10 kilometer radius for the likely landing zone. Their calculations yielded a potential path for the meteor that remarkably aligned with the government's projected landing zone. They set sail, traversing the meteor's projected trajectory. An innovative approach involved combing the ocean floor using a sled with magnets attached. Their findings were nothing short of astonishing. They unearthed 10 nearly perfect spheres resembling metallic marbles. Under the microscope, these these objects displayed a captivating array of colors, gold, blue, brown, and some even bearing a resemblance to miniature Earths. The composition analysis revealed that these minuscule spheres were mostly composed of iron with traces of silicon, magnesium, and titanium. What sets these findings apart from any other space rocks cataloged by NASA is their high material strength. The meteor was calculated to have moved at an astounding 60 kilometers per second, faster than almost all of the stars in the vicinity of our Sun. The combination of material strength and speed has led Avi Loeb to entertain the possibility that these fragments might be remnants of a spacecraft from another civilization or from some unknown advanced technology. The research into these objects is still in its early stages, and the team aims to discover whether these objects are of artificial or natural origin. If they are natural, it would provide insight into the materials that exist beyond our solar system. If they're artificial, the theories and possibilities are staggering, as the objects would be hinting at the possibility of extraterrestrial visitors from planets far beyond what we know. Many believe that these spheres are just the beginning of discovery and may eventually guide scientists to a more substantial find. The spheres are crucial in helping locate and understand any significant remnants of the meteor, which could offer further answers surrounding its origin. Whatever answers are found will inevitably lead to an incredible new sense of understanding of what is past our known universe, whether it's found to be a rock or a strange technological artifact. Number four. The Voynich Manuscript. Often dubbed as the world's most mysterious book, the Voynich Manuscript has baffled scholars, cryptographers, and supernatural enthusiasts for centuries. This 15th century book is filled with peculiar, undecipherable texts alongside intricate illustrations of
of unknown plants, strange creatures, and unidentifiable symbols. A wide range of theories have emerged in an attempt to decode its origin and purpose. One of the leading theories believes that the manuscript is a hoax, created to deceive anyone who finds it. The intricate, unique script has led some to believe it's an elaborate cipher, but despite extensive efforts from many people and linguistic experts, no one has been able to crack it. The drawings of unfamiliar plants have led some to think that it might be a botanical or medical text, containing knowledge for herbal remedies or alchemical recipes. Other theories suggest that the Voynich manuscript could be part of a genuine but now lost language. Some researchers believe it may have been written in a natural language and then encoded for secrecy. This idea is supported by the manuscript's linguistic characteristics, which appear consistent with language patterns. However, without a key to decipher the text, this remains speculative. There's also the theory, my favorite theory by the way, that believes the book belonged to extraterrestrial beings who spoke a completely unknown language, and the drawings and recipe depictions represent objects and wildlife that humans have never experienced. Why did the aliens leave this book with us? I'm not sure, but if this book teaches us anything, it's that we certainly do not understand aliens in the slightest, so we definitely wouldn't be able to assume their motive and reasoning. If the book is of alien origin, it would contain mounds of insight for what alien planets or languages look like. Number one, the Baghdad Battery. The Baghdad Battery is a strange historical puzzle that has raised questions about the technological capabilities of ancient civilizations. The battery was discovered near Baghdad, Iraq, and dates back to around 2,000 years ago, consisting of a clay jar, a copper tube, and an iron rod. What makes this find so confusing and perplexing is the fact that it dates back around 2,000 years, yet it resembles something extremely modern, a battery. However, before we get too carried away with visions of ancient Mesopotamians charging their smartphones, it's important to note that the true purpose of the battery remains unknown and highly debated. The basic concept is that it could generate a small electric current if filled with an acidic solution. Some researchers believe it may have had a more mundane purpose, like electroplating, which is a technique that's used in modern days to apply a thin layer of metal to objects. Others believe that it was an early form of medical treatment, possibly for pain relief, but there's no evidence that definitively confirms that the battery was created for this, and it isn't linked to any significant el electrical advancements in ancient times, which, you know, we would probably know Notice. But then that begs the question, is it even human? If it was truly human, why wasn't the technology spread throughout the world? Every technological advancement made throughout history was quickly spread through thousands of communities. A battery would not have just been disregarded. Even if it was mistaken or called a form of magic, people would still uncover it. It would have still been spread. So that leads me to think this was not a human creation. Otherworldly civilizations could be thousands of years ahead of us in advancements. If this battery was from them, Honestly, it would kind of make a lot more sense than it being a battery used by humans. Alrighty, how about we start off today with the most recent sighting on our list. Deep in the abyssal expanse of the Pacific Ocean, a mysterious circular enigma emerged. Scott Waring, a self-proclaimed UFO researcher, took center stage in this cosmic odyssey, unveiling a revelation that echoes from the depths off the coast of Nazca, Peru. The year is 2022, and the digital lens of Google Earth becomes the vessel through which Waring embarks on a journey into the aquatic unknown. As pixels coalesce to form the underwater tapestry, Waring's gaze fixates on a dark circle, an anomaly nestled in the oceanic embrace. The conjecture unfolds the circular specter, a submerged UFO, its secrets buried beneath the unfathomable depths. Waring's proclamation resounds. The UFO, a colossal entity spanning almost five miles in diameter, shrouded in the aquatic mysteries of the Pacific's abyss. The stage expands beyond the solitary UFO. It converges with the ancient whispers etched on the canvas of the Nazca lines. I've talked about them plenty. The tapestry of geoglyphs etched into the very earth of the Nazca desert. Archaeologists, custodians of the past, have grappled with the purpose of these lines. It's a cosmic dance a celestial calligraphy reaching towards the heavens. Some suggest an attempt to communicate with deities in the sky, a primitive signal across the eons. Others think, you know, the lines might be more relating to the cosmos, seeing observatories woven into the very fabric of ancient knowledge. Unfortunately, because they're so old, we may never know the true meaning behind them. I've talked about them in depth pretty often around here, so I do recommend watching some of the other alien and UFO videos on the channel to get caught up if you're not already. So it's here. At the nexus of terrestrial and aquatic mysteries, where Warren perceives a connection. The submerged UFO, the unknown sentinel, all tethered to the Nazca lines in purpose or 
By coincidence, the juxtaposition of the ancient glyphs and the colossal dark disk between the ocean's surface kind of sparks the flames of speculation. Are the lines, etched by human hands, remnants of a cosmic dialogue? Or Warren, because he, you know, like me, believes in extraterrestrials, thinks that the ancient Nazca culture saw communion with the deities beyond the celestial veil, perhaps beings not of Earth? You know, aliens? His convictions echo in the digital realm, where pixels and you know, conspiracies kind of converge. Warren's words echo through the channels of his cybernetic proclamations. The disk at the bottom of the ocean is 100% proof of aliens, which is a bold declaration, suggesting that the very technology of otherworldly origin is just hanging up beneath the ocean surface. Something that's been there since long before our digital scrutiny. Yeah, there's a lot of people that are skeptical out there. It's kind of like that shadowy figure in the corner. Critics may dissect the pixels, question the accuracy of the digital lens, and ponder when it comes to the water, the human mind might be conjuring some stuff up where we don't see things already. The submerged UFO becomes an artifact of faith, kind of like a test for believers and skeptics alike. As the mysteries persist, this enigma, a cosmic punctuation mark beneath the waves, awaits the scrutiny of digital archaeologists, cosmic poets, and those who dare to peer into the unknown. Before I accidentally turn today into a UFO fest, which will probably still happen, have you met me? How about we dive into the idea of an underwater alien landing area? The theory stems from a number of UFO sightings near the Solomon Islands, with witnesses claiming the UFOs appear to rise out of the surrounding ocean where warships sank during the Second World War, before vanishing into a remote island lake. This theory was discussed on the History Channel's Ancient Aliens show, which looks at the most credible alien evidence here on Earth, which my kind of show. Author Andrew Collins said on the program that there have been reports that objects, strange lights, actually rise up out of the waters into the air and move about for a period of time and then disappear. And often this is either witnessed from the beach or experienced close hand by fishermen, and it is said that sometimes these objects come so close that the fishermen can actually feel the heat as they pass. Another author, Mike Barra, said, there have been sightings of flying saucers appearing over the wreckage, flying into and out of mountains and volcanoes in the area, making the whole area really pretty interesting. Another commentator on the show said that the UFOs are often set in the ocean, as well as the sky. So we got a lot of opinions here, and they all agree. He said that people often talk about seeing light, not only in the sky, but in the ocean. You see lights in the ocean, like he can't stress this enough. And they see lights flying past overhead as well, sometimes crashing, once again, into the ocean, like a plane would crash. These sightings have led some to conclude that aliens might have underwater bases in the area, and you might not want to cross paths with the mysterious life forms either. Tim Swartz, author of Conspiracy Journal, said that there are numerous accounts of abductions, people who disappear after coming into contact with said UFOs, never to be seen again. Now, I know the story of Betty and Barney Hill far too well to joke about alien abductions right now. Heck, I've talked plenty about abductions on this channel, and it's a very real and very scary thing. No thank you. Alrighty, back to UFOs we go. The Shag Harbor UFO incident was the reported impact of an unknown large object into waters near Shag Harbor, Nova Scotia, a tiny fishing village on the Atlantic coast on October 4th of 1967. The reports were investigated by the RCMP, the Canadian Ghost Guard, the Navy, the Air Force, as well as the U.S. Condom Committee, because you gotta have everybody. I also had to research that because at first I thought it was a table for condom and I was busting, I got laughing. Okay, I know, time for facts. At about 11.20 p.m. Atlantic Daylight Time, at least 11 people saw a low flying lit object heading towards the harbor. Multiple witnesses reported hearing a whistling sound, like a, you know, kaboom, and then a whoosh, and then finally a loud bang. While en route to Toronto while flying over Sherbrooke and St. Jean, Quebec at about 3,658 meters from the Halifax International Airport, Air Canada officer Robert Ralph pointed out to Captain Pierre Charbonneau on flight 305 that there was something strange outside of the left side of the aircraft at 7.15 p.m. In his report, the captain reported an object tracking along a parallel course a few miles away. He described it as brilliantly lit, a rectangular object with a string of smaller lights trailing it. At 7.19 p.m., the pilots noticed a sizable silent explosion near the large object, and two minutes later, a second explosion occurred, which faded to a blue cloud around that object. Meanwhile, while standing at the wheelhouse of his vessel, Captain Leo Howard Mercy was looking at four blips on his decorator that were stationary. When he looked up about 28 kilometers from the vessel's windows, he could see the four bright objects situated in a roughly rectangular formation. The entire crew of nearly 20 fishermen stood on deck and watched the object in the northeastern sky. Mercy radioed the Rescue Coordination Center and the harbor master in Halifax asking for an explanation and also filed a report with the Lunenburg RCMP, outlining his sighting when they returned to port. So let's go back over to Halifax. The Chronicle Herald and local radio stations reported a glowing object that was seen by many people who were uh, 
call it into the newsroom. They reported witnessing strange glowing objects flying around Halifax at around 10 p.m., assuming an aircraft had crashed. Within about 15 minutes, two RCMP officers had arrived at the scene. Concerned for survivors, the RCMP detachment contacted the Rescue Coordination Center in Halifax to advise them of the situation and ask if any aircrafts were, well, missing. Before any attempt at rescue could be made, the flying object, with the light still showing, started to sink and disappeared from view. Just in the water and just glug, 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 glug. So, RCMP's gonna assemble a rescue mission, ASAP. Within about a half an hour of the crash, local fishing boats went out to the crash site in the waters of the Gulf of Maine, off of Shake Harbor, to look for survivors. But there were no survivors, no bodies, no debris. Nothing was taken by fishermen, Canadian Coast Guard, nothing. Which, by the way, the Coast Guard search and rescue cutter arrived about an hour later from nearby Clark's Harbor. By the next morning, RCC Halifax had determined that no aircrafts were missing. And while still tasked with the search, the captain of the Canadian Coast Guard cutter received a radio message from RCC Halifax that all commercial, private, and military aircraft were all accounted for. All and this was like all along the eastern seaboard, in both Atlantic provinces and New England. They were pretty thorough. They're like, okay, we got nothing missing here. The same morning, RCC Halifax also sent a priority telex to the air desk at Air Force headquarters in Ottawa, which handled all civilian and military UFO sightings, informing them of the crash and that all conventional explanations, such as aircraft, flares, everything, they'd all been dismissed. We knew nothing. The object was never officially identified and was therefore referred to as an unidentified flying object in Government of Canada documents. Yep. I'm just gonna repeat this for effect because you heard me. The government of Canada officially confirmed it as a UFO. Two days after the incident had been observed, a detachment of Navy divers from the Fleet Diving Unit Atlantic were assembled and for the next three days, they combed the seafloor off of the Gulf of Maine, right off of Shake Harbor looking for anything. Final report, no traces, no nothing. El Zippo, just saying it's fascinating that nobody found anything and that the government confirmed it was a UFO. So take that skeptics. All right, time to go back into the unknown. In 1977, the town of Broadhaven on the Atlantic Ocean coast of Wales was the location of a string of strange sightings that is considered the largest in the UK history. Roughly 450 people in total, according to government records, which is a lot of witnesses. So in my opinion, too many for this to be a hoax. It began with a sighting by 16 school-aged folks in February on a schoolyard of what they called a cigar-shaped object. A few of the witnesses claimed to have seen faceless beings near the supposed aircraft. Other locals began claiming to have also seen unexplainable things around the town, including the creatures without faces. A farming family reported multiple sightings in April and May, and even claimed that 120 of its cows mysteriously appeared on a neighbor's field a mile and a half away. But the rumor of extraterrestrials in Broadhaven truly began when multiple people say they saw a silver disc descend into the sea, with some alleging it entered via a small island just off the coast called Stack Rocks. Could it be, people wondered, that these seemingly faceless beings were using the island as a getaway to their secret underwater base? Look, I fully support the theory that aliens use the unknown underwater territory to their advantage, hiding in the depths that we as humans can't reach. I've mentioned it a lot before, but I genuinely think aliens hang out over in the Marianas Trench because humans can't get to the bottom of that. Though maybe UFOs can. I'm ending today with a tale out of Alaska, which tends to be home to a lot of weird stuff. If you don't believe me, look up sea spiders. Forever shuddering from that one. Members of the Mutual UFO Network have made claims about alien bases found underwater off of the coast of Alaska, based on eyewitnesses' reports from decades ago. So UFOologists and UFO enthusiasts have alleged facilities dedicated to extraterrestrials elsewhere in the world, including Dr. Stephen Greer's claim that a mountain in South Korea is hiding a massive UFO. Meanwhile, though, the researchers have focused on the mysterious activities in Alaska, which have suggested that the deep waters could possibly be the hiding spot of aliens? Yes, I get it. To a lot of people, they're like, okay, come on, that's an obvious answer, Alaska. Not a lot of people there. But there's researchers that believe there was truth to the claims about alien crafts that were allegedly seen by the crew members of a ship back in 1945. MUFON members strongly suggest that ETs have bases in the ocean thanks to the reports of the UFO movement over water witnessed by local residents. The UFO investigators say that they have studied reports of the UFO sightings from the 1940s, which were never made public. And that brings us to the end of our time, and I feel like today only added to my fears of what the heck is in the water. 